welcome to this great factory farming debate. And this is actually a little bit of an historic occasion because it's the first ever pre-election political panel on animal welfare. The debate tonight is about factory farming and whether it has a place in modern New Zealand. And by factory farmed, we mean uh, housed in cramped, often hideous, cruel conditions where animals cannot express uh, their natural forms of behaviour. I mean, yes, we do have to move away from those forms of factory farming which uh, involve cruelty. Um, and so the question is about how long we take to do it and, and what it's going to cost. And I'd, I'd like people to go into you know, this topic and the election with their eyes wide open. We can, as a, as a nation, we can choose to do this thing very quickly, or we can choose to do it over a period of time. And there will be costs involved with either of those things. And it's all very well saying we've got 280,000 kids living in poverty, uh, but by the way, we're going to double the price on some of their basic foodstuffs. So if we are going to do that, and we can as a nation choose to elect parties who will do that, we have to be prepared to accept that there will be a cost that we, the nation, will have to bear related to that. So if people are happy with that, can make that choice and go into that with their eyes open, that's fine. It's come about because of the economics and food production, uh, but we have to reverse that. We have to move sensibly and steadily away from those type of practices, and that's what should happen. So the debate then is not whether it should happen, it's a question of how quickly and how that should be managed. And I think you'll find that most parties here, Mark will agree with that, that is where the debate is. Uh, so the question really is, how quickly should it happen? And I think, like Richard, I can spend a lot of time talking about what my view on that is. But, you know, we have brought in tougher penalties for animal cruelty. Uh, and, you know, once the law was, in 2010, actually we made some amendments which did that. We have also, we also banned animal testing for psychiatric substance. Thanks to our colleagues here that worked with us on that. That is now what is the case. Battery cages for hens will be phased out. Sow crates for pigs will be phased out. Um, so, uh, you know, I think we're moving in the right direction. Most people agree with that. I don't think the changes uh, in poultry are acceptable. Uh, in, in my wish in, the, in our party's policy is to, is to stop and have a look at that. The increase in the size of the cages for chickens is the size of a credit card per bird. So you see those, how intensively those birds are farmed now. The new system is one credit card figure per bird. From my perspective, that's just, that's just not good enough. Uh, in what we, uh, what our policy is, uh, is to say by the end of 2016, we will have in place legislation with a timetable that will phase out intensive farming and it will obviously uh, affect uh, poultry for meat, poultry for eggs, uh, and pigs are uh, uh, the areas which will be uh, affected uh, by it. And, and I think that you know, we've got to have that discussion uh, and, and it could will take longer than 2022 to get to the point that we need to get to but the advice that I have been giving to the poultry industry who, as they have approached me, has been just hold back. Don't invest in these new cages for 2022 because the chances are that what is acceptable will move beyond that. And I don't want you making investments which end up being wasted. We believe it's really important that we have positions on issues that are of relevance to all New Zealanders. And uh, so I think it's about 62% of New Zealanders surveyed said that they are against factory farming, so it's important that we have a, a stance on this. Um, the basis of our animal welfare position is that we must recognise the international scientific consensus on sentience, or the feeling and potential of suffer for suffering from animals. And we also do not believe that cruelty should be tolerated uh, for economic practicality, impact and of course ent um, entertainment and that animal welfare codes should be moved into legislation rather than just keep those codes of welfare so that they are more easily able to enforce. As a country we are diaspora, we treat our most vulnerable. Animals are sickness beyond sickness, feeling pain, fear and suffering. They also work incredibly hard for us in this country. 
So when people talk about we're banning battery hand cages, there's no, that's not true. We're not banning battery packs at all. We're just simply putting another battery pack system in. Really important point to make. Uh, this chicken, well, I'm surprised to see no running away from me, actually. <laughs> but, but here you go. I'll, I'll, I'll show you. This is the piece of paper now that I put it on top of it. So this is the extra space that chickens will have eight years from now. Okay? So this is what we're talking about. And, and, and when you see this, when you, when you see that little bit of difference, then you realize that, you know, this is just not serious. Well, my definition of cruelty is when you contain an animal in a way that they cannot display their natural uh, animal instincts, when you are, uh, I guess, inflicting on that animal pain that is unnecessary, when you are doing things with or to the animal that, in any reasonable sort of way, is cruel. So that's, my, mean, that's my definition of so cruel. So, so, yeah. So, yeah. Yes, I do accept that battery hand cages are cruel, but I also accept that some of the earlier practices in the, in the uh, pork industry were and are now unacceptable. Um, so, and that's why we're moving away from those. So. Our policies are evidence-based. We want to have strong evidence, we want to have consultation, but more than that, we want participation. So we're about opening up um, avenues to make participation in our democratic process more easy. And our line to the MANA movement is a reflection of Sort of our generation's desire to just get the hell over ourselves and start collaborating together on issues that are really important that are going to define our lives for the next 70 years, such as climate change, such as inequalities, and also such as this, because this is a real blight on our, um, on our farming system. And you can see that there is strong consensus, mostly at least, between Labour and Greens and Internet Mana. And so when you make your party vote, think about that. When I first got into Parliament and started raising the issue of uh, animal welfare, that's back in 1999, members of Parliament, they laughed, they sneered, they cracked jokes and they rolled their eyes. They just couldn't take it seriously. Now it is taken really seriously and at least we are having serious discussions about it, thanks largely to um, organisations like SAFE, and campaigners like Hans. So even though um, there is a huge uh, long way to go and only incremental progress that has been made, I think there's been a huge shift in thinking and understanding and awareness about animal welfare and sooner or later, uh, these sort of practices that we're seeing up there, they're going to have to go. The only question really is when. And it's really good to see that we're now finally talking about these things. And and I believe that there's going to be good things happening in the future. Um, and you can all be part of that. And I think as politicians, you have such a big role to play in this. And the public is getting more and more behind these issues. And ultimately, what we're asking the politicians is simply to listen 